So when we talk about error distribution, we are really trying to get at the heart of precision and trying to figure out a way to talk about precision and to quantify it if possible. So here, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to talk about the normal curve, standard deviation, and standard error. And that gives us some really useful tools for thinking about the quality of what we've got. Just to refresh your memory, uh, what we're going to look at is the coefficient of restitution, and you'll be dropping a ball and measuring how high it comes back up, and that's going to give us a number we call the coefficient of restitution. Okay, so you're going to end up getting two values when you do your experiment. Uh, obviously, you will have the initial value for the height, and I'm going to just set that right here for now. And then when the ball bounces up, you need to figure out, I mean, you're going to have to measure uh, what the value for the final height is. I'm going to move it right over here. Okay. Now, what's interesting to think about is the ratio of the final height to the initial height. Like that. So, do you think that this ratio will be greater than 1, less than 1, or equal to 1? What do you think? What? Less than 1. That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, so what we will do, we're going to take this ratio and we'll take the square root of it, and that is equal to the coefficient of restitution. Simple as that. So take a look at this. What we have right here is I've put a number line up here for you, okay? And this number line, um, I don't know, where did you see this third grade? Anyway, um, these are for values of epsilon, okay? And epsilon cannot be any greater than one. And I'm gonna let you figure that out. I, I'm sure you can, you can figure that one out. Okay, so you drop the ball, it goes down, comes back up, and uh, the Excel spreadsheet is going to give you an answer, okay? Um, just one answer though, all right, so maybe it's that. Okay, so almost 0.9. Now, then let's say you drop it again, and it comes back, but this time um, it's up here. And it's kinda like, hmm, well that's curious. Well, why would that be? Well, it's possible that it's like that because you didn't exactly drop it from the height you thought, or maybe it didn't exactly go back to the correct height that it should have, okay, and you don't know. Um, maybe when it hit the top of the table, um, there was a weird vibration that kicked it up too far or something bizarre, okay, you just don't know. So you start to take more data points. Okay, hmm, okay, oh snap, and you keep going, and you keep going, and you keep going, okay, so if you take enough data points, all right, you could eventually have maybe something like this, okay, so your data here then is now all spread out. And so you might calculate an average value, and the average value, let's just pretend that it is actually 0.9, okay? Um, so you have this question about, though, if somebody asks, well, what was the answer? You say, well, 0.9. But is that really the answer? Well, it's fuzzy, right? Your data is spread out in uh, different directions here. Some of it's even all the way down here, right? I mean, and really, what if this guy is correct and all the rest are wrong, okay? Um, well, we have just a little bit of a pickle there. Well, here I put in another set of data, and um, this is your original data. This is the data that you took. And this is maybe neighbor uh, data that your neighbor's cat 
um, took for the same experiment, okay? Um, now, the cat, its data here is bunched more tightly than your data, okay? And if we want to think about how crowded these things are, what we could do is we could we could draw something like this to represent how crowded that data is, okay? So there's the cat's data all crowded together there. But yours is, is a little more spread out like that, okay? Now, I've been using the word crowded, um, but the better word or the proper word is distribution, okay? What we've drawn here, we have a distribution for the cat's data and we have a distribution for your data. So here I have put a better distribution model onto each of these curves and you probably recognize this. This is a bell curve or a normal distribution. And the thing that's really neat about a normal distribution is we can be very specific about how many pieces of data we have in the middle. And the important part to notice here is that the cat actually has more data in a narrow spot than you do. The cat's data is spread only across this area and your data is spread across this area, okay? Now that central area there contains 68% of the data. So 68% up here at the top in a wide area, 68% down here in a lower area, just like that. So as we look at the cat's data and we look at your data, what we can see is that the cat has more precision in its data than you do because precision is about how the data is clumped together. Again, uh, here is just a single set of data and I've put the curve with it. All right, and what I wanna point out to you here is that this middle part right there, that is the average, the regular old mean value, okay? So in this case, that may be 0.9, okay? But what's significant is that distance and that distance, okay? Now, when we go over that distance right there, from here to here and the other way, in this case, that distance is probably about 0.02, okay? And we call that distance the standard deviation. And we use the Greek letter sigma for that. Okay, so this lesson, I'm gonna have to cut it up just a little bit. This is the end of part A, so please, Proceed to part B.